on divorce court today. Marshall even gave blood to keep them together, but Lauren claims angry outbursts and the silent treatment are pushing them apart. Lauren Givens and Marshall Gray have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toller to resolve. Testimony in divorce court before your vows starts now. You two are here to do one of my favorite things, which is a before your vows. You, you're, you're engaged, but you got issues and you're not sure, so you came here to get my opinion. You gave me your marriage license. I'm either gonna hand it back to you, wish you good luck, or tear it up if I think it's a bad idea. I'm gonna start out, however, by talking about your issues. Why don't you tell me what's your primary concern or doubt about marrying Mr. Gray? I, I really love uh, Marshall. Um, but I feel like he has anger issues, and I really think it's related to a PTSD, because he, he did serve, uh, he did do some, uh, serve in the Navy for seven years, mm -hmm. he did see combat. Give me an example of when you think he got uh, unnecessarily angry over a small thing. We were out um, going to the store and everything, it was me, Marshall, and my daughter. And when we got back to the apartment, we were laughing and having a good time, me and my daughter go upstairs, go in the house. Now, I automatically, when I come in the house and close the door, I lock it. Mm -hmm. I automatically do it. So I knew he was still sitting in the car on his phone, but it didn't click in my head. I was just laughing and talking, and I came in the house, and I closed the door, and I locked it. I go in the kitchen, me and my daughter are still laughing. Then about a few minutes later, it's like boom, 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 boom on the door. I'm like, oh, my goodness. He's like shaking. I'm like, Todd, and go open the door. So when he comes in, he's like, oh, you guys, I ain't nothing, huh? I'm just out here standing around. Y'all don't have no respect for me. I'm like, babe, we, we, I forgot. I just, oh, you forgot? You saw me sitting in the car, blah, blah, blah. He's just blowing up. I'm like, oh, my God, this guy is... His anger is it's just, just over the top and, and disproportionate to the wrong. Right, exactly. That you did. exactly. And Mr. Gray, do you recall that event? I sure do. Okay. Were you that angry? Uh, not, at, not initially, I wasn't. Okay. You tell me what happened from your perspective. Okay. What happened was we, we were going through some financial hardships that day, that, at that time. Mm -hmm. We didn't have any money to our name. And um, what I had to do for us to be able to have money to buy dinner that day is I had to give blood. I had to donate plasma for like 25, 30 bucks. And I mean, they took a, they took a gallon of blood out of my body. <laughs> so, well, I don't know about you know, that, but, it, but it was I, a lot. You know, I'm feeling, you know, I'm feeling lightheaded, dizzy and everything. And, and then I, you know, I come in and not, number one, they locked the door on me. Which, okay, in and of itself is not a big deal. But when I bang on the door, they open it, and they're just like, oh, whatever, and they go back to, you know... Now, now Mr. Grader, let whatever. me ask you this. Did you take it personally? Because she has a... I lock my husband out once a week. <laughs> and just... Because he goes out the back door, and he's all... He's drums in my head. Baby, when you go in, lock the door, because I never used to. So I just come in, I lock the door. He's out there. But I, almost, I gave my life. I almost died for these people, you know? But, and, but you know, <laughs> I, I get that, but it, it's nothing personal. You knew it was nothing yeah, personal, I'm right? I'm sacrificing, you know, everything, you, you know, my body for them, and they don't, even, they don't even care about it. So, I mean, that's just, that, that, was, that was very traumatic. Well, well Mr. Gray, you, it, we've talked about one of the issues she has. Let me talk about the issues you have. What is your main concern or doubt with respect to Ms. Givens? Um, she just really doesn't take into account the fact that I'm human too, mm -hmm. you know, and she, Give me she, an example. Tell me a story which would illustrate her failure to appreciate that, that you're a person too. I want to hear this. Okay. Well, um, I'm a writer. Uh huh. And I, and I, I do my thing, you know, writers have to be in the, in the mix. You know, they have to, we have to really concentrate and get down to what we're talking, you know, what we're doing. Right. And so she, she just, she's looking for a memory card or something for a phone or mm -hmm. something like that. And she goes, well, um, do you still have that memory card that I told you to hold for me? Uh. And at the time, I'm like, okay, well, I'm writing right now. I don't really have time to so You don't want to break that. your concentration. Yeah, and no. because I didn't, because I didn't just jump up and do what she wanted me to do and drop everything that I was doing, she leaves the house and, 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 and just 
gets all upset. Of, she she left the house and huffed all mad and right. angry because you wouldn't stop writing to find her memory. And card. I got the silent treatment for the rest of the day. Ms. Gibbons, did that happen? No, he's telling it all the wrong way. Well, you tell it to me. The, this mem I'm glad he brought that up because the memory card is very important to me. I write music. Mm -hmm. So all of my music was on this memory card. And my daughter had the card when she went to go visit her, her father in Minnesota. And I said, please, you need this phone and you need a memory card. So please bring my card back. My, mm -hmm. It's very important that I have that memory card. So my daughter brought the card back. It was fine. She said it, it, I couldn't keep it in her phone because it would erase everything that I did. So I took it out of her phone. I'm using his old phone. And I said, well, let me put it in here. He says, no, don't put that in my phone. I'm like, well, what am I going to do with it? He said, well, here, I'll put it up. He takes the card and goes to the closet, and he so-called puts it up. Mm -hmm. Now, this is weeks, weeks later. I need the card. So I go in there, and I say, um, you got that card for me? And he's sitting there on the computer. He's, like, looking in his little case. He's like, ah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't see it. You know what I'm saying? I, I, it's not here, so I don't know where it is. I said, well, I didn't get upset. Mm -hmm. I said, well, you took it from me and you put it up. So where is Where'd it? Where'd you put it? And he's like, well, I don't know. I can't find it. Now, if I had to do that to his stuff, oh, my God, it would be World War V in that house, OK? <laughs> About losing or touching his stuff. Because he's like, if you touch my stuff, you need to know where it is. D to this day, we cannot find that card. And that's my music. And I got mad because he watched me. He sat mm -hmm. there and watched me search the whole closet, clean the closet out, Organize it, and he not once got up and said, let me help you look. I didn't cuss. I didn't huff and puff or nothing. I didn't say anything to him. Mm -hmm. I got my stuff, and I went in the living room, and I sat down, and I listened to music. And then I said, okay, he's not even going to try to look for it. I need to get out of here. I, I need to walk I, yeah, away. I, I kind of get, I, I get the scene there, and there's something interesting that you said in your papers about your aunt and, oh. and some orange soda. <laughs> so we're going to talk about your aunt and, and some orange soda. Okay, Your Honor. <laughs> Next, can a big bottle of orange soda really ruin a relationship? Divorce isn't easy. If you need help with your breakup, call toll-free 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Real Relationships in Crisis, Divorce Court continues. Now, Ms. Gibbons, tell me what happened with your aunt and the orange soda. Okay, hold on to your seats now. <laughs> this man can take a two-liter soda and chug it up until he sucks it, until the bottle is gone mm -hmm. in a chug, okay? So in our household, we all have, we have to have a soda. He has to have his own, and me and my daughter share one. So this time, it was only one soda in there. It was orange soda. He loves orange soda, OK? So we understand that. But my aunt came over, and so we wanted, she wanted something to drink. So I'm like, oh, OK, let me give her some of this soda. Maybe he won't you know, trip out a little bit. You know, I'm already nervous about touching the dang soda, OK? Because I didn't heard enough about drinking his soda. Do you, do you not let anybody drink your orange soda? I don't remember that, but I do like some soda. Yeah. I, I no, do but like are, soda. are you possessive of your own orange soda? I mean, this is a big deal to you that when that when you open that refrigerator, you want to see that bubbly orange. Yeah, I it's have, all about I that. Got, I gotta have it. It is gotta I'll, have it. Okay. It. I gotta have it. I just just want to make sure, Miss Gibbons, go ahead. So I I poured my aunt a glass of it, not even a big glass, like a glass of it, and poured it out. He comes in the kitchen and sees that. So I take the soda and I'm about to put it back. He's looking at it. He's like, I'm like, I just wanted to give her some soda. He's like, oh, God. He is mad. I, like, quickly grabs his keys, storms out the house, and leaves. And then he comes back a few minutes later with a whole new soda. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gray, did, did that happen because she gave your, her aunt some of your orange soda? Yeah, well, I uh, mean, uh, like, you, you see how big I am, so <laughs> you... <laughs> Yeah, I, I kind of can't give up, you know, too much of it, so... <laughs> so, so that would be a yes. Happen. That would be a yes. Okay, I got that. Now, we've been talking about you a lot, Mr. Gray. Mr. Gray, I want to ask you something about Ms. Gibbons. You say you have problems with her parenting skills. She's got a couple of kids, not by you, older children. Right. What do you say is your difficulty with respect to the way she parents? Um, she kind of lets her kids just 
do it, do whatever they want. Are they under 18 and, or over 18? Well, the, my daughter that lives with me is under 18. Oh, so under 18. The yeah. one that lives with us, she's under 18. Well, what, what goes on there? She just has no discipline, no rules, no no kind of no kind of discipline whatsoever. The part that he's not getting is I am on her constantly. And she's a teenager and it and takes you 97 times to tell them anything yes. before they do it. Exactly. I get that part. They're, they're, they're difficult people. <laughs> they're just, they're, they're, they, they just are. They're not rational, they're not reasonable, and they get on your last nerve. <laughs> and it, 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 it just goes away when they turn 20. Let me, <laughs> let, let me say this. I understand the nature of your issues. I want to understand why you're considering marrying one another. So I'm going to give you an opportunity. Not give me a 90-second sales job. Why Mr. Gray is Ms. Givens the woman for you? Go. Number one is, I just love the way she bats her eyes at me. I love the way, <laughs> I love the way she, 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 I love the way she loves me, Judge. And she, she, I know she truly, truly cares about me. And she has this sense of humor that's just impeccable. I mean, like I said, I write and I come up with these little skits and, I mean, right, she's right on she's it. Right she, on, and on she, she, she has these characters she does, and she's just, we, we, we die. We just mm -hmm. literally die laughing. And you don't it's literally just... die. <laughs> <laughs> I got this thing about the word literally. Everybody uses the word literally to mean exactly the opposite of what it means. It literally means it actually happened. Because if you were literally dead, we're all in trouble here. Okay? She's been, that was a wonderful job, Mr. Gray. Wonderful job. Ms. Givens, you got, you, you got a high bar over here. He did a great job. 90 seconds. Go. I love Marshall because when he is he is so brilliant. He has this mind to where he was able to sit and teach himself how to do this complicated Maya program, which is computer animation. Mm -hmm. He did something in a month's time that most people have to go to school for like six months to do. And he was so dedicated to learning it and doing it. It was just awesome to me. And when he's a loving person, he makes me feel so good. When he loves me, he just, he's very affectionate. And I'm the kind of person in other relationships, I don't really show affection like that. But being with him, I've become more affectionate because most times guys this size and stuff, they don't want to be all lovey-dovey, but mm. he is. He, he grabs me in public, he kisses me, and this and that. So I, got I love you. Him. You, did, you did an equally wonderful <laughs> job. And now we're going to turn to the compatibility test I had you two take and okay. find out what that says. When divorce court before your vows continues, can broken glass shatter their relationship? Do you think that Marshall can learn to control his angry outbursts? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now, 1-800-282-1991. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court continues. You know, before I do the compatibility test, I, 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 there was one thing I just had to ask you. Who wants to explain to me what happened to the windshield in the car? I want it. Ms. Givens, of course. <laughs> what happened? Of course. I'm going to come to you. We, um, one of my coworkers runs an organization in Sacramento. It's for youth to get off the streets, mm -hmm. young people to get their motivation and get them encouraged and stuff. She worked with me and she asked me to be on her board. She met Marshall too and she asked us both to be on her board. So she had a very important event for a fundraiser that she needed all of us to be there. Mr. Gray did not want to go. And so instead of saying, I don't want to go, he just pity patted around. And we get in the car to go. I finally get him to go. Mm -hmm. We're riding. And I have the directions because they called me and told me where to go. So I'm telling them where to go. He's like, well, are you sure that's where it is? I said, yes, they, they, this is what they told me. Well, I, it's not over there. I guarantee it ain't over there. I said, they live here. They know where it's at. How are you going to tell them they don't know where it is? Well, I guarantee it ain't over there. I've been over there. It ain't. I said, babe, what is wrong? Calm down. You know, he's like, no, you just this, this, and that. And he was just going off. And I put my hand on him and I said, babe, I'm sorry. What's wrong? I'm sorry. And he was like, don't talk to me like that. And he just like freaked out. And it mm -hmm. I guess the spirit on him jumped on me mm -hmm. because I was like, what the hell? And I hit him in his chest and I wanted to bust out the car like I was Incredible Hulk. 
and my leg, this is my bad leg. This leg came all the way up to the window. By itself, now, by itself. Now, it shot to the window. Now we anger problem. It shot to the window and cracked it. Uh, you cracked the windshield of the car. The win you got, that is not an easy thing to do. I got pictures if you like to see them. Yeah, I would love to see it. Mr. Mr. Gray, why don't you tell me what you say happened in the car with the windshield? Just, just like she said, uh, she, she has the anger problems, not me. I'm, dri I'm driving the car. She's got her finger right here in my face. Oh, my goodness. And it's just, she just, she, she's the one with the anger problems and try to put it on me. See how she mocks me? Uh, 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 that's, that's how she talks to me, yeah. Judge. <laughs> okay. That's how she talks. You are, like, what is that, you know? You, but, now, you know, it's interesting. I get these compatibility tests, and I create an image of who I think you are based upon what you said. And what I got on this paper doesn't look anything like the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, and do you want to know what she said she didn't like about you? Yeah. She said, you're selfish, anchors too fast, doesn't trust me, does not encourage me, and does not know how to say I'm sorry. Booyah. I'm selfish because... <laughs> Oh, so you agree? <laughs> no, I don't agree. I don't agree. But here's the thing. She, she what she does, she, now this woman, I don't know what's wrong with her fingers. She has some kind of circuitry Steady going on. Steady it up on. there, Mr. Gray. Steady it up but for me. There she, you go. She, she breaks every piece of electronic she touches. Everything she touches that's electronic is broken within about three now, weeks. Now, now Ms. Mr. Gray, and then I'm she'll, talking she'll about take my your stuff. character traits <laughs> okay. that she's talking about. Right. Do you, do you agree with any of them? No. No, no, <laughs> of not course at all. Not. <laughs> of course not. He thinks you're lazy. He can call me lazy. He's the one that tells me to sit down, stop doing stuff. Stop it. Sit down He sometime. says you use too many words to convey your thoughts. I can, mm. I, 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 I can verify on that one. I can verify. Mm. All right? Honor, that, I that have one's to do that because he don't understand. I have to keep explaining because he'd be like, no, no, no. And I'm like, OK, let me say it like this. Mm. I have to find a way to say it so it seems like a lot of words, but I'm trying to get through to him. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, you, you, you took a lot of words in my direction. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I consider myself fairly quick on the uptake. <laughs> Listen, you two, I, I can tell you exactly what I think. Judge Lynn Toller's ruling next. If the ink on your marriage license is barely dry, but you're ready to call it quits, call toll free at 1 877 311 2222. Divorce Court, Judge Lynn Toller's ruling right now. Mr. Gray, how old are you? 38. Ms. Givens, how old are you? 45. I like you people. I mean, I like you people a lot. First of all, you just look good together. <laughs> Don't they, they look, you look like you belong together. You're both handsome, you're both, both mature, you're both thoughtful. I don't know who took these tests. We, we, we're going to take these tests and put them down over here, because I don't know who took them for you. Because the people that showed up here got a sense of humor. They have a sense of one another. They have a sense of self. They have awareness. They have anchor issues. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't break out a windshield. I know. <laughs> that was you. It jumped on me. Wait, no, wait, no, no, no. <laughs> I see a lot of angry, but I've never seen it jump person to person. <laughs> I think that you would both do well to learn how to manage your anger. Everybody would do well to learn how to manage their anger because you got a good thing going here. You got a good man, you got a good woman. And the only thing standing in between that, there's no cheating, there's no running around, you don't have a full out uh, uh, virtual life. None of that stuff is going on. You actually have some concrete sense and values. You're good people. Good people can get felled by the smallest of things, especially when it's anger. It's frustration unexamined. It's, it's a lack of control, and you can handle it. You can just decide to manage it. And if you can't manage it, go to anger management. Get it done. Get it taken care of. Get lively. Get loose. Get married. I love you. <laughs> this matter is adjourned. Both Lauren and Marshall have started anger management classes and are shopping for rings. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com.
or call toll-free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court.